religion is you're constantly connected and surrounded by other people. And there is a wonderful book that I personally love uh, called um, Illusions of Reluctant Messia by Richard Bach. And uh, if you remember this book, um, there is a, a moment when the vampire shows up and um, two people are talking and the vampire shows up and the vampire says, I am dying, I need your blood, could you please give me a cup, I need it now. And they start talking about it, like, if I give you a cup of my blood, I'll be weakened. And I would not be strong and I cannot fly the airplane tomorrow or whatever. And the vampire keeps talking, it's like, yes, but if you do not give me the blood, I will die. So one of us will suffer anyway, and who needs, to, who, who will suffer? So when you see somebody who is dying right there and who needs your, your cup of blood, you normally pour it, right? You just pour it, you're sure. And then 15 minutes later, I need another cup or a couple cups. Because what we create is an addiction. Because our blood is sweet to somebody else, right? And so you give and you give and then you feel bitter because now you do not receive sweetness. And so every relationship has a potential for that. And I'm not saying that, I'm not talking about the relationship that always give me a cup of your blood, and I'm not talking about a relationship that is always in that blissful state that anything and everything is just amazing. I'm just saying that we are flowing in and out of those patterns, and there is always this compromise that you're making in order to satisfy somebody else. And when you do it, you actually are thinking about yourself always. As soon as you come from that decision that I have to give that cup of blood and I'm not ready for that, because you go like, if I don't do it, I will not survive it. It's, it's better for me to give this cup of blood now. I, I will be, uh, I would end up in a situation in which I still have to do it, so I'd, I'd rather do it now. And so the decisions that are made out of that necessity is not the best decision sometimes. And I'm not talking about somebody you love is dying and you do give them the blood and the kidney and whatever else they need. I'm talking everyday decisions that are based on this person needs it and the more you give, the more addiction it creates. And so you cannot make anybody happy, you can make people happier. But everyone is responsible for their own happiness. What was your question? My question was that um, I agree with exactly what you're saying. And how does that connect with the people like, this is a choice I make. I don't have to stay here. And your father's always going to be your father. Because I know she's a bloodsucker. Mm -hmm. So how does that intertwine with if you and I... Are already blood connected. Are already blood connected because yeah. him, so I'm not meaning you, <laughs> I just go, ta-ta, I can see the vampire in you. But I could look at her and say... So when you sign your contracts before you are being pushed into the earth, right. you sign the contract and you say, I'd like five blood suckers in my life because I really love it and maybe I was a vampire before and that would yeah. be an amazing experience for me to feel how it feels um, to be sucked like that and life sucks and that's not so good and so what do I do? I've signed the contract. First of all, you've signed the contract that many years ago and you can look at the contract and say, well, I really appreciate your body being a channel for my incarnation. I really appreciate all the lessons that I've gotten from you. Because wouldn't you be a bloodsucker, I would never recognize it in other people. I would be still doing that, but now I feel how it feels. And I know how, how it is. So I can recognize it much faster. And so I forgive myself for signing this contract. <laughs> it was a great decision at the moment. But now I'm that many years wise there, and I let you be. I love you enough to let you be the bloodsucker that you are and not do anything about it. And I let myself be. And I love myself enough to be okay with that. That I let myself be and I can recognize that I hate every moment of that interaction when my blood is being sucked and I notice it. And I step away from it. And I love that person from the distance. Mm -hmm. And I send the most. And by the way, people suck your blood because they are not self-sufficient. It's not because she needs your blood. She needs something. It doesn't have to be your blood. So very often air, um, organic, highly vibrational raw food, 
water, sunlight will satisfy this need. Most of the human vampires do not understand how to get this, the energy from within because they're depleted most of the times and how to get the energy from outside. So they, um, they connect to you as a source of energy and that's what the addictive pattern is all about. I do not mind, like I have tons of energy. I do not, do not mind to support thousands of people. I have no problem with that. It really doesn't deplete me, what's interesting. Sometimes I need a little more space just so I can rejuvenate, but I do not mind to have all the people I have to connect with and support. At the same time, I notice that when they cling to me, when they create that, that relationship of neediness, I need you. That's not love. That's much lower vibration. The need comes from fear. If I don't have you, I'm not gonna survive. And so the fear is about 50 on the emotional Huffman scale. And love is about 700 or 800, right? And so when I give them that, I create a space in which they only learn the energy of neediness, which is 50. So they resonate with 50 and it's not enough. And 50 will always stay 50. No matter how much 50 they get from me, it's not enough for them to ascend. I know people who've been dead for many years, either working or laying on a hospital um, bed, doesn't matter. You know people who are dead and working, right? You do, you all do. And so I know people who've been dead for years just because they cannot leave this place, this earth, and they want to and they don't, they can't because they don't have enough energy. And I worked, it was pretty amazing, I worked with some people that were ready to leave and they couldn't. And when I had a session with them, and I've connected them to angelic realm to do their um, you know, highest aspiration, highest potential, they actually left the earth. It was a devastating experience for me because I didn't want them to die. I came there to support them energetically. But as soon as they got a little more energy, they actually could lift up and go. And I was like, oh my God, what did they just do? But at the same time, it's not me. I'm just the channel and I allow the energy of love to, to flow through me and what they received before that was the relatives that would come and, and, and that, that was all. I had an experience in Optimum Health Institute, a pretty amazing place, by the way, um, when the woman was crying because she felt that she's not surviving, it was too much for her. And four or five women around her were um, condolencing her, whatever they were doing. And I, I couldn't even get in because they were like so around her and she she was really basing in that energy of 30 or 40 or 70 maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was very, very low energy and I could feel the pattern and I'm like, oh my God. And, and she started with sobbing and she went into hysteria and it's been like 10 or 15 minutes and she's like, <gasps> and then she cannot even breathe and they're like, oh, oh. <coughs> and the more they do it, the worse she becomes. Yeah. So I just picked up this, this energy, I inverted it and multiplied it and sent it back to her. It was like a, a ball of energy went through this whole group and they go like, oh, what was that about? And she just sat and was like, oh, what was that about? Like, like she never cried before. I, I was shocked because I sometimes, you know, it was a big energy that was there. So it's not that I've created something. I just inverted that pattern and, and they felt how much energy they created there. And it went through them as a shocking moment and, and they really got awakened. And so this is what oneness is all about. When you see somebody falling apart or, or going into low vibration, you don't have to be in that group because you very often you're in train. But when you step out of this group, you sense the energy, you see the energy, and instead of judging this energy, you feel love. Like, I love this woman. She's an amazing woman, but she just cannot stop. I know that her spirit is much bigger than that body in con convulsions. In that moment, you can come above that and not be... A, here is my, you know, blood, and you go into here is my love, then that person can actually ascend.